um, first of all, um, I was doing my research and then I found out that you studied for like four years in the Netherlands. I did, yeah. Uh, and then I also heard that you was uh, capable to speak some Dutch. Is that true? Beetje. Maybe <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I was I was also reading that you have like a like a heavy uh, injury, like over the last yeah. if I say it good last two years almost now. Yeah. Um, can you can you maybe explain a little bit what what happened and how you how you recovered from that at, at this at this stage? Yeah, so um, I was playing out in Argentina um, for Great Britain and um, I, in the middle of the match I got um, a bump to the side of the head and it was a bit of like a, a weird accident. Um, and then I uh, developed concussion from that. So first, first symptoms were headache and I was really irrational and really um, emotional so I did all the concussion tests when I went off the pitch with the doctor and she was like no you can't go back on and at that point I got like, really angry and emotional and um, looking back I knew something wasn't right and then um, over the next kind of three or four days it, it was all right I had to wear sunglasses and I wasn't able to be in loud rooms and stuff but then um, when I flew back to England then things started to get really bad um, and I couldn't um, move really without um, feeling sick and dizzy. I was really sensitive to light and noise. I was having headaches like every day, um, near enough like every, all the time. Um, and yeah, I, I just really struggled with movement and that lasted, well, I didn't play hockey for um, 10 or 11 months. I started back playing in um, December and it happened in February. Yeah, and did it... Um so, so when when this when this happened, eh, um, was it for you also that you that you even thought of that you maybe not can play anymore? Like, yeah, yeah, there were times not not when it happened because I thought, oh, it's just a small mm -hmm. small concussion; it won't be, it won't be long. Um, but there were times, certainly like four or five months down the line, when I was still getting daily headaches, and I thought, am I going to able just to live a normal life? Because I wasn't able to do normal things. Like I wasn't able just to go out with friends for coffee or do anything social mm -hmm. really because with the light and the sound stimulus and the movement and everything it just it just flared up all my symptoms so um yeah I was I was there was a, a lot of soul searching going on and hoping that I'd just be able to live a normal life rather than actually play hockey and um yeah it yeah I, there were there were times when I didn't think I would but um yeah with the right support um and um, medical like intervention and stuff and help with my mindset I was but well, I was able to recover and um, here I am well before COVID-19 hit I was um, happy and healthy and back playing again. You, uh, if, if we look to you as a, as a player how, how, yeah. how would you describe yourself in, in, your, in your strong points and maybe maybe also points that you have to maybe still uh, develop? Yeah um, I'd say from uh, an outsider's point of view, I'm a kind of player that doesn't do that much um, from a spectator's point of view, but um, from within the team and from the coaches, I think they um, respect all the work that I do. So I do a lot of off the ball running and um, covering players and organising. Um, my game is very simple. Um, I do all the simple things and the basic things um pretty well and i'm uh, yeah one of my strengths is that i'm quite consistent um you know i'm always level i'm never a four and then a nine and then a three and then a ten yeah so it's, it's like it's like average average but like yeah it's always pretty yeah. consistent so you know what you're going to get with me um yeah and points that i want to improve on is i want to be more um more of a goal scoring midfielder um so sort of being encouraged by my coaches to to get forward more because I certainly have the skills to do it, but it's just the mindset mm -hmm. and, and and getting out and doing it. Um, so that's one thing that I, I really want to develop. So actually we can say that um, the, 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 you, you, if you have a car and, and you, you can paint, you can change the paint, it doesn't really change the car, but if you take the motor out of the car, which you never notice, then the car yeah. never drives as it used to do. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of how I 
how I see myself. I'm not a, a flashy player that's going to make the crowd go like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but without, but without you, it can be, it can be like a disaster, like you, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. If if we look to your 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 game, uh, your uh, when you play the game, do you have like favorite tricks or favorite moves to do uh, to maybe pass a player or to? Yeah, I think um, my tricks are to get in the space to receive the ball yeah. away from the player. So you yeah. kind of a little bit one step ahead, so you don't have to go into contact with them. Um, I think that's how my game is and um i watch a lot of video and um from other teams and also like football and stuff and see how players in the midfield use those pockets of space in there um and then other skill wise my game is more of a of a passing game so try and pass the ball and find people mm -hmm. running through rather than dribble myself so if we if we if is it also then that you maybe even yeah you you told before you want to be a more scoring midfielder but is it not more important for you than to give assists <laughs> instead of scoring goals then maybe yeah of course as a midfielder yeah you, you do want to give assists but um i think in the past i've been reluctant to to shoot and to, to get inside the circle mm -hmm. um and yeah in the in the past kind of couple of months that we were playing when i was doing that in training and in games and i was getting shots off and, and, and scoring goals. So. So how, because, yeah, the, the COVID-19 is now here. Um, how, how is training going now? Because I can imagine it's, it's pretty difficult now. Yeah, it's tough. Um, the first couple of weeks were quite stressful because the Olympics were still on. So you were trying to um, train as much as you could and as hard as you could with very limited equipment and resources, mm -hmm. um, yeah. which, was, which was pretty stressful and quite difficult. Now, um, that the Olympics have been postponed till next year, it is allowed me um, and most other athletes just to kind of take a step back a bit and not not push as hard as you can because um, yeah. there's more time now. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been good um, here in England. The weather's really good. Um, so touch wood that stays because that means training outside is is much easier than when it's cold. Um, I've got a couple of bits of gym equipment at home which you can do so much stuff with. Um, so we've been given quite a lot of flexibility in terms of if we want to follow a structured program or if we want to just do our own thing. And um, I've been kind of doing a bit of both, um, following a bit of program, but also sourcing stuff online and thinking of my own training programs because I'm well, I'm doing my personal mm -hmm. training at the moment. So it's something that I'm interested in. Um, so, yes, yeah, so equipment wise, I've got three kettlebells, um, eight kilograms, 12 and 16. So a good mixture of weights. Um, I've got skipping rope, a ladder. I've got a TRX machine, which you hang on a tree, which is amazing. Um, definitely, I would invest one of those. And actually, probably my favorite piece of equipment I've got is a weighted vest. So you um, put it on and you can put up to 15 kilos in it. So it makes, you know, the most basic of exercise really hard. And is it also, um, are, are, you, are you happy? Maybe uh, on one side that after this whole COVID-19 started that they that they postponed the Olympics. Uh, I can imagine you was disappointed maybe for, you know, because you, you're living to it. But if you think now back to it, are you happy that it's postponed so everybody have like a more eagle chance to perform there? Yeah, definitely. You know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been fair to do the Olympics. You know, certain countries were in total lockdown, certain countries... Yeah, for example, training. here in the Netherlands, they, they start the field training again and everything. Yeah, so it, firstly, it wouldn't have been fair. Um, it wouldn't have been right to do it because you know the world would have been in a horrible place and yeah, so the Olympics would, yeah. would be yeah. a really big celebration of sport and countries coming together. So it wouldn't have been right doing that whilst yeah, everyone yeah. else was having a really you know bad time. Um, and you know the Olympics comes around every four years and you want athletes to be in the peak of their um, performance and it would have been super hard for anybody to be in the, the peak of their performance with the whole lockdown and restrictions. So yeah, rightly so it's been, it's been pushed back. You know, obviously it was a shame, but there's no way that I and the Great Britain hockey team would have been in any kind of yeah, form yeah. from the Olympics, you know. Yeah, so, so it would be more like a, one yeah, big lottery yeah. or something. Yeah. It just wouldn't, it just wouldn't have been right. Um, so yeah, I, Early doors in the lockdown, I, I read a quote and it was like, sport can wait, but saving lives can't. So that's the yeah. main focus at the moment.